Hello, all you lovely people out there. Kevin from CC Pipe here once again, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. Today's topic is going to be a quite simple one, but a very useful one though. And it's going to be the image processor tool in Bridge. And what is it? It's a feature that allows us to batch process or edit multiple images in Photoshop using Bridge. And it's also very handy just for converting, say, TIFFs or PSDs into JPEGs, for example, for a web output. Why should you care? Well, maybe not too surprisingly, processing multiple images at once could save you everything from minutes to hours. And it's extra valuable, of course, when you have something where you perform the same adjustments very frequently and also many images. Like I mentioned, this is a bridge feature. So we'll start off in Adobe Bridge. First, I'd like to select images I want. And here I have two sets of demo files. And uh, we'll start out with these, some uh, 3D renders of mine. And as you can see, these are relatively heavy PSDs. They have layers and all that. And they're not very suitable for uploading to, say, Instagram. So let's try and make some versions that are. We'll find the tool we want under quite logically named tools and Photoshop and image processor. As you might then have guessed, it's utilizing Photoshop to do editing. And if you can't see it here, you, of course, might not have Photoshop installed or just not the right version, in which case I'd say try and update both softwares and just try again. We are then greeted with this dialogue here, and uh, they do a pretty good job of guiding us through this. And first we can select our images, and uh, I like to select my images first, as we just did, so we don't really need to do it here. Then we select where to save, which for me is usually in the same folder, and it won't overwrite anything, only make new versions. So in case something goes wrong, you still have the backup, which tends to be a good idea, which I know from experience. Then next, we select our file type, and we also have some additional options here, including resizing our images. But personally, I prefer putting that baked into an action though. And I'll choose uh, JPEG since these will be for web. And now somewhat annoyingly, they do not offer the option to convert to PNG for some reason, uh, which is a limitation here. Not much we can do about that though. And uh, just as a little side note as well, if you want PNGs, you can use the batch tool, which is in the same menu under tools, Photoshop and batch, but it doesn't give you quite the same saving options and you have to rely more on actions and scripts to change file formats. Speaking of actions, that's the next thing we can add here. And it's really what in my opinion makes this feature so powerful. And uh, actions, by the way, if you don't know, is Photoshop's term for macros. And we need to check run action, make sure it isn't accidentally checked if you don't want to run any. Then we select our action group and then our action. And if you're familiar with the actions panel in Photoshop, this should make somewhat sense. And we can only run one, but keep in mind you can have an action perform several other actions in Photoshop. So that's not really going to limit us. And here I have a action that resizes images to 2K and at the same time gives them a bit of sharpening. So they look nice and crisp after being resized. So we'll go with that one. When we are happy with our settings, we just hit run. And if we leave Photoshop open, we can see the progress. If I run many files, I usually just check that it seems to be doing what I wanted and then go and get some coffee or work on something else if my computer can handle it with Photoshop running in the background. Now, as you can see, we should be having some nice looking web friendly JPEG files here. And uh, yes, they seem to be 2K and uh, sRGB. All good. Now, for the sake of demonstration, I didn't pick a huge amount of files here to make it go faster. And obviously, the more files we have, the more time we can save by working this way. And with the power of actions, there's so much more we could do to our images here. And actions can also run scripts. So that really makes almost anything possible providing that you can write scripts, of course. I myself am not an expert at all on that topic, but I have doubled in it just a bit. I thought I'd show you one more example of how powerful this can be, and it's something from a workflow that I use at work. I'll go to the second demo folder here, and here I have some pack shots on white, and these are more 3D renders of mine, by the way. Now, what I want is for all of these to be squares without necessarily scaling them down to a specific size. I want CMYK and for them to have a clipping path applied around the product. Using one of my custom made actions, this can be done very quickly. So I'll just select these, run the image processor and choose this action here, uh, which will be the pack shot T10. Then uh, press run and uh, let's see what happens. We can then see that it is adjusting the canvas and uh, making a clipping path. 
Now, we should have pack shots ready to go, and it didn't require any manual labor from us whatsoever. And uh, let's just open one of these up and check it out. We have a um, CMYK profile, yes, and it's square. And uh, we also have a clipping path over here. And if you're interested in how to create Photoshop actions like this, I'll probably be breaking down how to do something somewhat similar to this once I get to that tutorial. And that's basically it. Like I said, quite a simple one, but it's yet another one of those big time savers, and I wouldn't want to live without it. Hope it helps you out, and if you have a job where you save a lot of time using it, why not share it in the comments? I'd love to hear what you do with it. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot, and also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you, and until next time, have a good one.